Your grace holds me now. We don't have to be afraid. Your grace holds me now. Your grace holds me now. You don't have to live in fear. Your grace holds me now. Your grace holds me
break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. And there is power in the name of Jesus. There's power, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Jesus. To break every chain, God. Oh, we worship you. To break every chain, to break every fear, to break every doubt, God. Break every fear, Jesus. Come on, every hand lift it up. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. I hear I hear the chains falling. I hear, I hear the chains falling. Oh Jesus, I hear. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains. I hear the chains falling.
sisters, good evening. How are we doing tonight? We're doing all right? Thank you. Amen, amen. We welcome you to Destiny Community Church, amen. Tonight we're going to get ready to pick up our tithe and our offering. And uh, there's two ways to give, brothers and sisters. Uh, the first is online at dcc-sa.org uh, forward slash give. And the second way is to text the word give to 210 761-6960. Amen. So if we're ready to give, bros, before we do that, bros, real quick, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 17, just this, the very beginning of this verse says, then by constantly using your faith, you know, that just that right there, bro, it's not just enough to have faith, bros. You got to constantly use your faith. Brother Robert just mentioned something right now of everything that's going on. Right now is a time to activate your faith, brother. If you, you can't, it's not just enough to have it. You have to use it. You have to put it into practice, brother. Right now when everything is going downhill, right now the word of God says that a thousand will fall to my left and ten thousand to my right. But to you, to me, the, 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 the disease, nothing is going to hit you, brother. So with that, you, you activate your faith. You put it into practice. You use it. So right now, with your tithe and your offering, let's tell God, God, I'm going to put my faith. I'm going to use it right now, God. Believing that you are going to provide everything for me, God. It doesn't matter if everything shuts down. You are my source, God. You are my provision. You put that faith into action, brothers and sisters. Amen. So with that said, let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight, oh God. Lord, for your awesome word, Father, that encourages, that builds up, Father God, that that teaches us to stand on that ground, Father God, on a solid rock. It is your word, Father God, that's not going to allow us to be shaken, to be moved, oh God. It doesn't matter what the enemy throws our way, my God. We are rooted in you, Father God. We are founded on your word, my King Jesus. And tonight we're going to give, Father God, by activating our faith, oh God, believing, oh God, that you are a provider, my God. We give to you, Father God, as cheerful givers, Father God, as a cheerful church, Father God. We bring to you our tithe and our offering, Father God. Bless my brothers and sisters tonight, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Come on. Give it to Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. In the midst of all this that is taking place, you're still worthy to be praised. We look to you, God. We look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. It's you, the one who started it, the one who can end it. God, we look to you, God. We look to you, not to the left nor to the right, God, but we fix our eyes upon you, Jesus. Our confidence, our trust is in you, God. You are the rock. You are our foundation, God. It's you, God. Immovable, chief cornerstone. It's you, Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness. He's worthy to be praised, isn't he? He's worthy to be praised. Amen, amen, amen. Maybe at the end we can continue with, with that. But, you know, guys, you know, we're, we're living in some crazy times, man. We are living in some crazy times. Things that we've never seen, you know, uh, never in history, in our lifespan. And... Um, you know, but this is why we have church. And right now we got to take advantage of the time that we have here together. We got to take advantage, you know, 
cast your cares upon God, guys. If you have struggles, if you're struggling with some fear, if you're struggling with some doubt, if you're struggling with some issues, you know, even maybe personal issues, marital issues, financial issues, the Bible says to cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. You know, this is why we come here, guys. This is why we do. We don't want to leave the same from this place. You know, if you have some weight, give it to him, man, and leave different because that's what he wants. He wants to bless you today. He's real. He's alive. He's here right now. And he wants to bless your life. Don't leave the same. Don't leave the same. Amen. Get out of your seat. Just pound a couple of people's fists and just say, I'm glad you made it this, more, this evening. I'm glad you're here. I got a short message tonight. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, guys. It's good to be together with you this evening, amen, and to be able to praise God, love on God. <clears throat> this is, what is this, our fourth service here in church together. And, um, you know, guys, I always used to say this, and, and um, I mean, I thank God for these four services that we're having together. We don't know what the future holds, but I always used to say, you know, we got to thank God, man, for the moments that we have here. Um, knowing and understanding that in other places, guys, like in China, uh, definitely in China and other parts of the, in the world, uh, they cannot gather together. They cannot do what we do here. Uh, they cannot worship God the way, uh, the freedom that we have. And, and that's why uh, this is no doubt a non-denominational church. But if you want to let a Pentecostal shout, it's cool with me. Amen. If you want to do a Pentecostal dance, that's good with me. Let's, let's praise him, man. Let's, let's really worship him. Let's love on him. <laughs> Remember, the special things happen when the people of God call on his name, guys. Special things happen, man, and, and I really want to encourage this. If you're coming into this place and you ha you've been having a rough time, man, give it to God. Give him your problem and then give him your praise. Amen? Give him your problem and then thank you, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Thank you already because I know you're going to do something. I don't know what, but you're going to do something because you're bigger than my problem. And I just really want to encourage this, amen, especially now because uh, just like you, I'm human and I feel the weight of all that takes place as well and, and what is perhaps, you know, things that can come and, and so forth. But you know what? God is bigger and greater and grand. We always win. Remember that, guys. We always win. When God is in your side, guys, we always win. The Bible said that if he is for you, who can be against you? Amen? We always win. So rejoice with that. And I'm taking some time because I don't have a, a long message. <laughs> and we'll see how that works out. But let's open our Bibles quickly, guys, to the book of Matthew chapter 4. We're going to read a passage that is a passage that I've, I've preached on before, and it's just something that last night as I was reading, it caught my attention once again, and I just want to bring out uh, what God has to say this evening to you. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 through 22, it reads in this form. Do we have it? It says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. 
Then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Amen. Amen. So I want to give uh, just a small thought, guys. And if I can title my message tonight, it would be... Um, the, the call out, the call out. And I'll give you a little bit more of, of that, that understanding of what, why I titled that. But so if we look, guys, prior um, to these verses I just read, uh, you're, we will see that Jesus had just began his ministry. Amen. Jesus had just began his ministry, and he was preaching to the public, guys, Okay. And, and we can see it here on verse 17. We didn't read it. But here in verse 17, he's preaching. He says, from, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So prior to what we read, Jesus was preaching to the public. And he was preaching, or we can say calling people we can so the gospel and the message, of course, is of repentance, and that's kind of the way we enter into a relationship with God through repentance. So the call that God started when Jesus and is still going today, the gospel, it, it's a call uh, to for people to enter into a relationship with God. Because, of course, uh, the Bible says that, you know, sin has taken us away from, from him. And we have fallen apart from our relationship with God from, since Adam and Eve. But, but Christ has come. And that's why the gospel is the good news. Because it is the, Jesus is the means, is the bridge to get back into this relationship. So the gospel uh, is, is called out. He's preaching and he's calling people into relationship through repentance, okay? So this is in general, guys. This is what the message of the gospel is. And it's for the public. It's for the gen in general population, we can say. And that's how he started. But when we get to the verses that we just read, guys, uh, you know, I kind of, you know, I kind of put words together. And, and, and this is kind of how God really ministers to me. But so... The gospel is for the public and it's for the, ge the general population and it's calling people in, right, into the relationship with God. But here in verse 18, we see a calling out, guys, okay? We see a calling out. And, and that, that's why I titled the message this way. And when I speak of the word calling or the phrase calling out, it's almost to say, uh, uh, there's two things to say about that. Or we can say two definitions. You know, when somebody says, hey, he's calling you out. Have you heard that? He, oh, he's calling you out. He's putting you on blast or, or whatever. The youngsters say that. Or, you know, he's calling you out. Um, and that's kind of what, what this Jesus was doing here, guys, with his disciples. You know, the message of the gospel is to bring people into the relationship. And I'm going to say it over and over because I want you to grasp this. Uh, so it, the, the gospel, the public, the, generate, the, the group, the, uh, the general population is the gospel, and it brings people into the relationship. But, but then it goes into God calling out for a purpose, guys. Okay? So we can say that the first thing uh, when he brings us into relationship is, is, is salvation, guys. But God wants more, guys, than just salvation from us. He just doesn't want to save us, right? He wants to use us, okay? So there we go from the calling into this relationship through repentance, then to the calling out. He, and he calls you out, like I mentioned, like he calls you out. And he calls us out by name, guys. We see here, guys, four names that he calls out, right? We see Peter and then his brother Andrew and then John and then James, the sons of Zeb Zebedee. He calls us out by name. Now this call out is a lot more personal, guys. Okay? It, it goes more personal. It, it, he calls us by name. And, and, and I need you to understand that. That's, that's, that's important. Now, when we get to 
the verses that I just read and how Jesus, you know, when you first read the Bible, I don't know about you, but when I first read that, I said, man, how is it that Jesus just came across these guys and said, hey, come follow me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. And they drop everything. Well, that, that wasn't the case. Jesus had other encounters with these people before, okay, prior to this, this, this time here. So he had other encounters. And, of course, and, and that's what I'm trying to say here is there's a time frame. I, I believe for all of us, when, when I first got saved, I, I got saved and I was happy and I felt free. And I've mentioned my story many times. Uh, man, I would see the birds singing. I would see the trees moving. And I thought everything was so beautiful. It's like I was reborn again. Like I, I was seeing this for the first time. It, it was so beautiful. And through time in my relationship with God, I felt a call from God. Time passed. Just like these guys, okay? Time passed, guys. And then I felt a call from God for a purpose. Amen. And now I'm here. I didn't really even know that my purpose was to be a pastor, but I knew that there was a purpose. And that's what I'm trying to say here tonight, guys, is that God, for some of you that are here, are, you're saved. You know, he brought you into this relationship and, you know, through your repentance and recognizing that you needed him, you know, but I'm here to tell you guys that God also wants to call you out. There is a purpose for your life. And, and we see it here, guys. And, and we're going to see, you know, in this call, I, I want to see certain things that, that I want you to grasp and understand concerning this calling now. The first thing that I want us to see, guys, is that God called the fishermen out. Fishermen, guys. Fishermen. Uh, and I say this because it's interesting, guys. Um, at that time, King Herod was the one in charge of that region. And why, why wouldn't you think that Jesus maybe wouldn't, you know, wouldn't have got somebody from the king's palace, from King Herod's palace? You know, why wouldn't he choose somebody from there? Um, you know, I started to meditate and think, why wouldn't Jesus uh, choose maybe somebody from the, the synagogue? You know, a Pharisee, a religious person, you know, a scribe or a Sadducee. Why wouldn't he choose somebody like that? Instead, he chose the fishermen, guys. And, and I, I don't know about you, but I, I want to really encourage this, guys, because sometimes I think we feel that maybe we don't have what it takes to be used by God. Sometimes I think we start to look at other people and we say, well, God can probably use him, you know. God can probably use her, but, but not me. And I think that's why I really want to highlight this point, guys, because the first people that God called to be his disciples were fishermen, guys. Normal, simple people, just like you and me, guys. So I, I need you to grasp this and understand they were normal people, simple people. Not only were they normal people, guys, but they were needy people. And, and I want to go somewhere with that, definitely, because I, I think that for those that feel maybe a little insecure, because we all at times suffer through insecurity, uh, I, I really want you to grasp this and that God wants to use you, not the one sitting next to you. No, you, you, you might say, no, I can't. No, yes, you, if you've given your life to Christ and you're in this relationship with God, that's one thing, but he's calling you out tonight. He's calling you out tonight. You, you, not your neighbors, not the one behind you, you, yes, you're normal and you're simple that's that he wants to use your life amen so i really want you to grasp that the second thing that i saw there is need, not only were there normal people but they were needy people guys these fishermen were needy people and let me explain with that what i'm saying with that the region of galilee in jesus time was a very prosperous region guys okay but they had poor leadership and for that reason guys the majority of the population from, from uh, Galilee was, was in poverty, okay? Because the higher-ups were taking all the money, right? And, and for the most part, many of the people from, from uh, Galilee were poor. In other words, they were needy. 
They were needy people. Um, not only that, guys, but when we start to look a little bit more, J Jerusalem, Jerusalem, there was also Jewish people there, of course, like Galilee. But the people in Jerusalem, guys, when, when they heard about people coming that were coming from Galilee to Jerusalem, they would, they would kind of look at them kind of like if they were unsophisticated, which can mean simple, right? Like they were real simple people, unsophisticated. And at times they would look at them as very uneducated people, guys. Okay? Now we can get a little bit into this because, and the whole reason for this is because of the way they spoke. Uh, the Galileans, guys, at that time, uh, many of the people, especially in Jerusalem, talked Greek. But in uh, Galilee, they were Aramaic. They were speaking the Aramaic tongue. So they were, it was different tongue. And so they felt that they were very uneducated people. Not only that, and I wanted just to highlight this, guys, too, because after all this happens, Jesus goes to the cross and resurrects, and now we have Peter and John preaching the gospel. Uh, they go to the synagogue, guys, and, and, and the Pharisees call them in and the Sadducees call them in. And, of course, they're telling them not to talk about Jesus. They don't want them to talk about Jesus but look at, what, look at what the scripture says concerning Peter and John, guys, in the context of not educated. They were from Galilee. Acts 4.13. It says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. They marveled. And they realized they had been with Jesus. So these men, guys, again, going back to untrained, uneducated, unsophisticated, these are the people that God used, guys. These are the people that God used. And, I, I, again, I think I really want to encourage, guys, for those to, right now, you might find yourself here and you say, God can't really use me. I don't have, you know, what it takes. I don't have the education. I'm untrained. I'm telling you, God wants to use you. 1 Corinthians 1.27 says that God chooses the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. He chooses the weak things of this world to shame the strong. Amen. So I really want to encourage that, that God wants to take you from a relationship into now a full-blown service. Man, especially in the time that we're living now, this is not the time to pull back. This is the time to come in and say, God, what do you want me to do? I need to be the light. I need to be the salt. I need to do something. Yes, we, God is calling you out. God wants to use you guys. But check this out. So, but this needy, this need, needy people, or, or, or we can say poor people, I think there's something good in this, guys. When we find ourselves needy or we, we find ourselves poor um, to a certain degree, and, and we'll look at the physical and then spiritual. Well, well I'll just share them both. Um, but so when we look at the needy, guys, in, in the physical sense, think about these fishermen. These fishermen, guys, they understood, guys, they, they were, if they were poor, if they were poor because mo the majority of the population were poor in Galilee, if they were poor and they had a need, these people were not going to stay, you know, just waiting for somebody to give them something. These people were active. They were working. I mean, we see them here, guys. When Jesus came across and was walking by them, what were they doing, guys? Peter and Andrew were casting their nets. They were fishing. They were working. Uh, John and James, the sons of Zebedee, they were mending the nets, perhaps because they had already gone fishing or they were going to go and it was torn. They were fixing their net. They were getting to, to go off and, and, and fish and so forth. So they were working, guys. And I think this is one of the reasons why God, like, wants to use you guys. But he wants, you have to find yourself in a place of need, guys. Because that place of need moves us into action, guys. It, it, it definitely speaks of humility. And, and I'm going to look at that in a little bit. But it also speaks of hunger. People that are hunger or hungry, they, they'll do some, anything to get what they need. 
And that's the kind of spirit, spiritual attitude that we need, guys. I want to do the things of God. Like God wants to use you guys. And I, and I just already said that it doesn't matter what, where you're at in a sense of, you know, uh, educated wise, trained wise. It doesn't matter. God wants to use you. The only thing that God is looking for or that you need to put is, is las ganas. The effort. And that's why I wanted to highlight the need because it's the need and the hunger that that you see people like, man, I need to do something for myself. I can't just stay here. I need, to, I need to do something. These people were doing something. And God calls people that are working, guys, that are actually wanting to do something. Those are the people God calls. If we look, guys, if we look even throughout the scripture, when God called Moses, what was Moses doing, guys? Does anybody remember? When God called Moses, on Mount Horeb, what was he doing? He was tending the sheep, his father-in-law's sheep, Jethro. He was tending them. When God called David, what was he doing? The same thing, tending the sheep. When God called Matthew, Matthew the tax collector, what was he doing? He was in his table collecting taxes. When he called these guys, what were they doing? They're working. God calls people that are are moving, that want to do something, that want to put some effort. The thing is that sometimes we're putting our effort in all the wrong places. <laughs> like, no, God's saying, use that, but use it for my glory. Use it for my purpose. That's what God wants, man. He wants you to put leg on us, but on the right stuff. But he'll call you from that place. He'll call you from the place of work. Amen. And so I think about this too, and, and I say, okay, God, so, I mean, in his wisdom, he calls those people that are working. But I, I, I think also he calls them, the people that are working is because, let me tell you something, work is hard, right? Is work easy? Has, I mean, who has an easy job? Does somebody have an easy, you have an easy job? Let's trade, sister. <laughs> Let's trade. You better write that as long as you can. It's not always like that. Sometimes you get some good ones. But, you know, even, I mean, I got, you know, so I pastor, I do AC. Uh, sometimes I got some great times, you know, even pastoring. Sometimes I have a thousand meetings, and that's very hard and headache. And, and you know, but it's part of my job. It's good. Uh, AC, too. Sometimes I change filters. Sometimes I have to change a union, the attic. You know, you got your, it, it's, but Work for the most part is hard, guys, and it takes a lot of effort. And I think that's why he calls people that work and like to work. Because in ministry, guys, or in the call, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of effort. I mean, I've been doing AC for about 20-something years, and it, if, since I was 14, 15 years old, and working and working and it takes effort and, and patience and push and, and and you know and I work with a dad that man even when I was sick he wouldn't let me stay home, you know I was out there working and and it, but it taught me it taught me ministry it talks me it taught and so I'm talking a little bit of Spanish here more too but it taught me not not for me not, que no me no me rajara like I'm not gonna give up. I'm going to continue, and that's the way it is. You know, sometimes our works, we got to finish, and it's hot. We got to finish, and, oh, you, you put the extra, extra push. To, that's the same mentality. That's the same effort that you have to put in, in, in the call of God. When God calls you, don't think it's going to be all easy. It's not. So I want to encourage you, but I want to speak some truth also, right? I want to encourage you. God has a call. God wants to use, but it, it takes hard work. But you already should know it because you already work hard. You hear what I'm saying? Number two, guys. So the first thing was they were fishermen. Number two, follow. The call that God has for you guys is the call to follow. The call to follow. Check this out, guys. For the most part, I don't know about you, but I think it's in our nature 
for the most part, we all want to lead. Right? Is it just me? In our nature, our selfish ambition. I don't know, when you were little kids, did you ever play follow the leader? Does, it, does anybody remember that game? You always wanted everybody to follow you, right? Some of you wouldn't play the game if they didn't follow you. But let me tell you something about leadership, guys. That before you can lead, you have to learn to follow. You have to understand that. Before God can take you to where he wants to take you and use you the way he wants to use you, the call is this. When you say yes to God, he says, okay, come, follow me. You got to follow God. In other words, you got to do what he wants, not what you want, guys. That's, no, now everybody's a little bit quiet and now everybody's, <clears throat> pastor, I got a call in my life. Yes, you do. God's going to call you out. God wants to use you. But you got to learn to follow him. The call is based upon him, guys. It's not based upon us. It's not. God has a plan for you, man. Jeremiah 29, 29, 11. Does anybody remember that, that verse? Does anybody, can anybody say that verse? Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know. Yes, yeah, say it, say it. Don't shy away. You only know the beginning part? Yes. For I know the plans I have for you because they're not to harm you, but to prosper you. God has a plan for your life, guys. And let me tell you something. This is one I'm going to tell. I'm going to give Brother Ozzy because that's his favorite verse. What does Psalms 32, 8 say? The Lord has the best path for your life, guys. For I know the plans I have for you, declares I'm not too hungry, but to give you hope. God's plan is bigger and better than your plan in your life. I know you might say, I, have, I already have this planned out. It's not bad to make plans and all that, but we give our plans to the Lord. And I say, I follow you, God. Whatever you want. In this call, guys, what God is saying, I'm calling you out. Uh, you, yes, the normal, the simple, maybe uneducated, untrained. Yes, you. I'm calling you out because I see some potential in you. I see some fire in you. I know I can use you, but you got to follow me. That, that's the step number two, man. You got to follow. That was what he was telling these disciples. You follow me. Follow me. And, you know, guys, I'm telling you guys, it, in this world, I want you to understand, in everything that is going on, and I preached on this before, but even in everything that's going on, guys, it's not about feelings, guys. It's about facts. You have to understand, the reason we follow God, because he's all about facts. Actually, he's big facts. And that's teenage language there. But he's big facts. I mean, he, he, he's truth. If you look at his report, if you look at his, if you look at the scriptures and you look at the stories, everything he says is true. He works. If, if you look, if you had some experience with God on your own life, you can look back to your life and everything is facts. What he says really works. It's seen here. It's seen in your life. So it doesn't matter what we feel, guys. It's about what works and what's factual. You hear what I'm saying? So I don't care all these good feelings. Well, I think, Pastor, you know this over here, man, it feels good. And I feel man, it's going to be great. Yeah, but what is the word of God saying? What is it saying? I mean, this is where all our facts is. Some decisions are so simple, guys. They're so obvious. But our feelings get the best of us. I think a lot of people today, even in our nation, are, being, are driven by their feelings, guys, rather than facts. And that's why we have the chaos that we have. Because feelings are dangerous. Feelings are dangerous. I mean, yes, God created us to have feelings. And they're good. When they're in check with the word. 
But man, when you let those feelings get a hold of you and they start driving you, man, you're in a roller coaster. One day you're up here, the next day you're down here. And you just, man, it's, it's an ugly life to live. We live by faith on facts, guys. When he says, follow me, you follow him. Everything that he's saying, well, how am I going to do it? I don't know, but I'm going to believe God and his word. If he said to do it, I'm going to do it. Whatever he's called me to, it's, it's facts. It's faith, guys, on the facts. Amen? So he called them to follow, guys, and he calls us to follow. And the last thing, guys, is that he wants to be first. He wants to be first. And we can have the worship team come up here. He wants to be first. He wants to be first. Look at the story, guys. Jesus is, is coming by these guys. He sees the potential. He calls them out. Follow me. But in the following, guys, they, they leave behind certain things. Certain things that perhaps at one time they were first in their life. And God says, if you're going to follow me, I have to be first. When we look at these disciples, what did they leave behind? What did they leave behind? Talk to me, church. The nets, what else? Their livelihood? Their livelihood? Let's be more detailed, but just good. Nets, livelihood, family, sometimes it's people. Sometimes it's positions. They were fishermen. Sometimes it's possessions. Their boat. They left the boat. That was part of their life. Nets and the boat. And the sons of Zebedee left even their dad, people. Now, I'm not saying to leave people. I'm not, I'm not. This is personal, guys. God is a very, remember, when he calls out, it's no more public. Okay? The message is public. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anyone, anyone. It's public. Boom. Everyone. But when he starts calling out, it's personal. He calls my name. You. You, I can use you. You, I see the potential. I see the power you have. I want to use you. Follow me. Follow me. But put me first. Put me first. I don't know what needs to come out of your heart. But there might be some things. I know for me there were things in my life. I mean, I've, I've mentioned stories. And, and when I say... You know, leaving stuff. I, I don't know to what extent. These people left their boat, man. They left their possessions. They left their positions. He left his parent, but there's no doubt that, of course, he was still there. And, and I say this because that's exactly what happened to me many years ago. Maybe 15 years ago. Where I knew that God wanted me to do a certain thing for him. He was calling me out. It's time for a new direction. And because I grew up in a very legalistic home and, and, and church, um, it was very hard for me not, uh, to make these changes. And, uh, you know, long story short, guys, I heard a message and God started speaking to me. He said, hey, you know, the reason you don't change is because you don't want to offend your father because this is the way your father brought you up. But I'm telling you to make this change. And this is where God spoke to me. He says, you're loving him more than you're loving me. And I was like, oh. And, you know, I love my dad, man. We, we worked together for 20-something years, man. We have a great relationship. I love And I still love him. And I go see him at night at times. And, and, and it's a beautiful relationship that we still have. But in my heart... I needed to put him to the side and put God and what he wanted for me to do, to follow him and do what he wanted. And, and that's my thing to you guys. Where, where do you find yourself? Let's stand to our feet tonight. 
where do you find yourself, guys? I, I'm telling you, do you believe that God has a call for your life? I mean, it's God even, maybe for somebody, God is telling you and is speaking. And I felt that I wanted to bring this message because we're talking about the assembly on Sunday. We talked about the assembly. And we talked about that every part, every member needs to do his part. You know, we talked about, you know, our, our mission and our goal to, to be the light. And, and I'm telling you, man, this, right now, at this time, is the time to step out, to stand out as Christians and be a light. Where there's hate, man, bring love. Where there's chaos, bring peace. Where there's fear, bring faith. You hear what I'm saying, church? This is the time. We need to lead people to God. We need to lead them to God. And God is calling. It's, this is not just the pastor's job. I remember I used to be in a church, El Shaddai, back in the day. That's the pastor's job. No, that's all of our job. We're all called to be the light. We're all called to be the, the soul. He's calling you out. There's more. There's, there's more than coming here on Wednesdays and Sundays, guys. There's more. And he's calling you out. Will you follow him? Will you follow him? Will you submit to him? That's really what I'm saying. Will you submit to him? Or will you continue to do you? What's in your heart, guys? What's holding you back? What's holding you back? You know, the scripture says in Matthew chapter 6, you cannot serve two masters. You either serve God or you serve, in this case, in the, in the scripture says money. It's talking about money because money is a God as well. It could be, but anything could be a God. Your car can be a God. Your work can be your God. You can't serve two masters. What's holding you back? Every head bowed and every eye closed. I want you to meditate on that. Let's worship just a little bit. Just worship. Really, church, I love you. I do. I feel this is the time to, for the church to rise. And for some of us, we've been discouraged. And for others, we've been distracted by the things of this world. But God is calling you. If you've entered into this relationship with God, God is calling you out. And he's saying, you you what are you doing for my kingdom what are you doing for me he's calling will you follow him will you do it his way not yours will you let go of what's in your heart The Bible says that the heart is and desperately wicked. Who can know the heart? Jesus says, I, I alone knows the heart of man. Even tonight, if you find yourself, oh, I don't know if there's something in my heart. Pray, ask God, show me, God. Is there something in the way? Something in the way that stops me from putting you first? That's what happened to me, church. God showed me that I, I was loving my dad more than him and therefore not making the decision that he wanted me to make. Father, I thank you this evening, God, for your word, for your presence, Jesus. I thank you. Be in the middle of us. Holy Spirit, move in the hearts of your people. Those that are here, speak to them. Those that are watching through, Lord, social media, speak to them, God. Speak to them. You're calling, God. You're calling. You're coming. You're coming. Therefore, you're calling, God. This is the time. Here, now, is the time. I pray that your people will heed your call, God that they would follow you wholeheartedly.
for those, Jesus, that know of certain things already in their heart, help them to make that decision. I can't make it for them. They need to do it on their own. They need to choose to put you first. They need to prioritize their life, God, and put you on the top. It's there, God, when we do these things that you qualify us to become fishers of men. Lord, I bless your people, God. I encourage them, strengthen them through the power of your might. We thank you for your word tonight, God, for your presence. Lord, that we dismiss from this place, but never, never from your presence, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The saints of God say, amen, amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday.